Hey everyone, this is Pete and welcome back to Simming and Chilling, a uh, occasional series where I just play a comfy sim and we have a nice chat about something. If I was a VTuber this would be a Zatzadan stream, or a Just Chatting stream, but I am not a VTuber so it's not really one of those things, also it's not a stream, um, but it is the same idea. We're just going to chat about some stuff. So uh, let's start on today's mission beforehand. So Dirt Finder, I've got a frankly ridiculous situation on my hands. You see, some of the local children have been coming down with a curious and unsightly form of dermatitis. And a few fretful folk have been putting it down to the condition of the recreational facilities. It's all nonsense, of course, but if we could just humour them and give the whole thing a thorough hose down, I would be most grateful. I'm actually going to go to the shop um, and see what I can afford on here. I've got a thousand dollars. Uh... Probably, yeah, probably worth upgrading to that. Let's do that. Uh, what else can we purchase? We need an extension, maybe. I'll have that, and that's about all we can afford for the minute. Okay, so. Go clean the playground, and off we go. This is Power Wash Simulator, by the way, uh, which we played the last time in the series. It's a uh, a thoroughly comfy sim from Future Lab, who are the creators of the Velocity series. Um, how do you? Can't remember. You change which washer you're using. Controls. Have I done something wrong? I think I have done something wrong here. So I, I definitely bought the thing. How do I equip my thing? So that is owned. Info. Owned. We'll, we'll get to chatting in a minute. I just need to figure this out first. Uh, show dirt, sprint, select extension, select nozzle, ah, equip. E for equip. All right, let's have that one and the extension. And we have a selection of different nozzles to use. So, okay, let's begin washing. Anyway, like I've said before, I, I, I like to um, do a video like this when I've just got some stuff on my mind that I fancy talking about for one reason or another. And uh, certainly this week I have some things that I want to get off my chest a bit because it's been, it's been a frustrating week. So you may recall, if you saw the previous episode... Uh, where we were playing some Power Wash Simulator. That I was talking about getting into a routine with some exercise. And um, weight loss and all that sort of thing. And that had all been going remarkably well. I, 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 I'd been quite pleased with myself in terms of the, the progress I'd been making. And the commitment I'd been showing. It had only been a couple of weeks, but I was already quite satisfied with what I was managing to achieve and getting that sort of initial phase where you get started with that sort of thing is always super important because the most challenging part of establishing any sort of routine like that is motivating yourself and thinking right I want to do this this is why I want to do this. This is how I'm going to do this. And it was going well. So I was booking in sessions for the gym and the swimming pool. And I was going 
pretty much every day in the week except on days where I felt absolutely exhausted so I quickly figured out what my kind of limit was and where I should probably take a rest instead um, but yeah for a couple of weeks it had been going great now what happened on Monday is that um, I was going to have a uh, an evening gaming session with some local friends now because a lot of those local friends don't have um, as much free time as they used to largely due to the fact that several of them have got families now that's always an opportunity we like we like to jump on because well, we, we don't get to do it nearly as often as we used to we used to have a weekly board gaming session uh, which gradually went down to fortnightly and it's it's become well it became it basically became completely irregular because of covid among other things but it had been kind of kind of dropping off in terms of regularity before that And so typically, any time the opportunity presented itself to get together and play some games, we, we would like to take it. So we were all looking forward to one of these increasingly rare opportunities to play some board games together. I'd also got some video game related paraphernalia that I'm currently not allowed to talk about. Um, that was going to need some, some testing with the assistance of these people. And so I was all set for that, uh, but alongside that I was conscious of my newfound commitment to uh, my gym and swimming regime. And so I thought, okay, rather than, rather than just skipping this evening, because I'm going to my friend's house, rather than just skipping this evening, what I'll do is I'll use my lunch break to go to the gym. I thought that would, that would be a sensible thing to do. That would be a a worthwhile thing to do. So rather than just skipping a day altogether, I would uh, still make it to the gym. I'd still have that nice feeling of accomplishment and achievement and of attempting to reach my goals and all that sort of thing. And so I booked in for a gym session at lunchtime. I was all set to go. Lunchtime rolled around and i um i got changed i got ready stepped out the door all ready to go and as i was walking the few steps from my front door to my car what would happen my right ankle gave way completely i sprained it and i fell to the ground i skinned a significant chunk of flesh off of both of my knees and I was in a considerable amount of pain uh, right in front of several passers-by who to their credit offered to help uh, but to be honest in the situation I wasn't entirely thinking straight so I refused their help and just sort of staggered back into the house bleeding profusely from my new knee injuries and uh, limping along at the unfortunately familiar feeling of a sprained ankle which is something that I have suffered before so uh, I recognised immediately what had happened um, but it was frustrating and upsetting because it happened when I had such good intentions to do something a little bit out of the ordinary and prove to myself going to sneeze <coughs> excuse me that I was sort of proving to myself that yes I was committed to this I wasn't just going to find an excuse not to do it because it would have been very easy to just go oh I'm seeing my friends tonight so I'll, I just won't bother tonight I'll go again tomorrow and then once you start thinking like that it's very easy to get into a situation where you go well I didn't go last night so maybe I won't go tonight either because you know I'll start again I'll start again next week or something it'll be fine um, so yeah that, that's frustrating because I, I'd made that specific effort to kind of keep myself on track which is something that I often 
wouldn't do in that situation. I, I, I'm someone who will often end up finding excuses not to do stuff like that, and that's partly the reason why I'm in the state I'm in. Because there's always a good excuse for it. Um, but yeah, in this in this situation, I I deliberately given myself a good talking to and said, right, no, you're not going to make excuses. You are going to you're going to stick to what you've committed to, and we're going to make this work. And my reward for that was injuring myself quite quite painfully. I won't say seriously because you know it's a sprained ankle it's not a super serious injury or anything like that it is a frustrating and annoying and very painful injury though and so for the last week I've just been limping around thankfully the scrapes on my knees have mostly cleared up at this point um, but the ankle has been giving me considerable trouble for all of this week so yeah it was just frustrating and upsetting and depressing because it it just felt like I mean I know it's a stupid thing to say but it's it just felt like life sort of conspiring against me you know when you get those times when you have all the good intentions in the world and you think yes I'm going to do this and then something happens that is completely out of your control to ruin all those good intentions and make it so that thing you'd been planning to do is no longer practical for whatever reason And that is really, really annoying and frustrating and upsetting. Because it's, it makes me feel like a lot of the hard work I've done already, granted it was only a couple of weeks, a lot of the hard work I've done was kind of wasted. Now, rationally speaking, I know that's not the case, because if anything... If anything, what this situation has done is made me more determined to get back to it as soon as my foot feels better. So it's perhaps not as big of a problem as I want to make out. But you know, when something bad happens, it's very easy to just focus on the negative side of things and the frustrating side of things and how, how the plans that you've made have gone awry. And just put you in a position where achieving your goals, which might already be a long way off, as they are in my case, they're pushed even further back. And so, to be perfectly honest, I've spent a fair chunk of this week being quite upset. And... Alongside that, there have been anxiety attacks. Which I won't say are, are directly related to what we're talking about here, but I think it's just a case of having a poor mental state makes me more prone to that sort of thing. And so I was already in a, in a situation where I wasn't having particularly positive thoughts. And from there, things would just end up getting it a bit worse. So that was nice. So, as I record this, my ankle is still in a fair amount of pain. I think the worst is over. Because the, the horrible purple bruising I had the other day has, has mostly gone away. It's, there's still some bruising there. But it's not as, as obviously bad as it was. And so I'm hoping 
within the next week or so I should be back back on my feet properly and able to do stuff again. It's like, like I say, it's, it was annoying that this happened just as I was kind of getting into a groove of things. And you could, you could hopefully tell from my last Power Wash Simulator video um, that I was actually feeling quite motivated for once. Motivated with regard to exercise, I should add. I generally don't have too much of a problem with motivation for things like personal projects and that sort of thing. And my day job now that I have a day job that I like, but getting motivation for things that are a bit more challenging, like, you know, starting an exercise regime. taking time out from each day to spend not on video games but instead on doing some exercise that was a pretty big deal for me so I hope you can understand <laughs> why that would have been a bit frustrating for me um but anyway, yes. So, so that is the main thing that that sort of happened this week. That made me want to record this and just just talk and just vent a bit, I guess. Again, I'm, I'm sure some of you listening to this have encountered some sort of similar situation. Uh, a good intention went awry through a situation entirely beyond your control. I, I'm, I'm not even... I'm not even sort of pissed off at the at the nature of the injury because because I know that injury could have been looked on as as like a, a sort of symptom of of my weight problems or of aging or or whatever. But you know, I'm I'm not even I'm not even thinking of it in that way. It's it's just something that happened. And it could have happened at any time. It could have happened to anyone doing what I'm doing. And so I'm not even not even pissed off about that side of things. Because I know I've got work to do. I know I've got a lot of work to do on improving myself and making my life better. And that's what this whole exercise regime was about, really. It was about trying to improve myself. About trying to sort out some of the problems that I've been having. And make myself feel better. Get up. But anyway, such is life. And I guess an important part of living life is just learning to roll with those punches. And not be discouraged. Because it would be very easy after this to just go, well, it's a sign. It's a sign that I'm obviously not supposed to do this, so I'm not going to do it anymore. 
but no, I've, I've actually managed to, I've actually managed to get myself into the mindset where this has happened, and I'm now feeling that I'm looking forward to feeling better so I can get back to the gym, so I can go and have another swim. And that is a positive change in myself. So that's something. You know, I'd, I'd rather not confirm that for myself by getting injured, but, you know. <laughs> if that's the way things are going to be, then, well... It is what it is. The one fortunate thing, I guess, is that nothing aside from the exercise side of things nothing that I either want to or have to do is really affected all that all that much by this so like I can still do my job I can still do my personal projects I can still do the things that I enjoy There's some of the things I'd hope to spend my time doing in the week are temporarily not possible. But anyway, I babbled on about that for 20 minutes. Let's talk about something else. So what has happened in the last week or so? Well, I guess one thing worth talking about is um, the new generation of Hololive English is now with us. They debuted last weekend. I just, one of the things that's happened with the situation is I, I kind of lost all perception of time. I'm kind of wondering if... Did I hurt myself this week or was it last week? Or was it the week before that? No, I'm pretty sure it was this week. Which means that the, the second generation of Hololive English, known as the Holo Cancel, um, they debuted last weekend. And they are all thoroughly charming, as one would expect from Hololive. I haven't spent a lot of time with all of them yet I've, I, I've, I sort of skim watched all of their debuts so I could write something about them for Rice Digital and I watched the entirety of um, Crony's debut because I think she's my favourite so far um, and I've watched uh, Mume playing uh, Journey which was absolutely the perfect game for her. But I like them all a lot so far. I think the next one I want to watch some more of is I want to spend some more time watching um, Bells. Because I think if anyone is going to be the new Gura for this generation... It's going to be her. Because she has such natural charisma and energy. And is such a such a natural performer and someone who can bring people together. I think I think she's gonna be a big hit in particular. But I like that they each have their own 
very obvious appeal this time around. I mean, that, the same is true for Hollow Myth, the first generation of, of Hollow Live English. But somehow it somehow it feels even more obvious this time around that they've each got their own distinct appeal elements. So you've got Mumei who is quiet and polite and doesn't swear and she says things like oh dear. <laughs> um, then you've got Crony who has she's got quite a mature vibe about her but she's also got a certain I don't know if I want to call it a nihilistic streak about her but she, she certainly seems quite willing to talk openly about um, things like mental health and the way that she's feeling like at, at various points in her debut in her early stream she's she said outright that um, she's not a happy person and she wants to be happy and that she's quite an angry person and that sometimes makes her respond in ways that she might regret and I just thought being, being that open with people because it was obvious from the way she was talking that she was talking about herself and not about her character being that open and honest I think from the outset is really helping to set a good impression for her because as we talked about when we when we last talked about VTubers which I think was one of the Euro Truck Simulator uh, videos one of the things that people appreciate the most about vtubers is when they is when they combine the the likable aspects of their character with some real life relatability so when they combine talking about things from their real life with stuff from their character so yes Crony is the warden of time but at the same time she's also someone who has clearly struggled with depression and anxiety and wants to find ways to deal with that productively and feels that having the opportunity to do socializing with other vtubers and with her chat and with that sort of thing she feels that will be a good outlet for some of the things that have been frustrating her up until this point and i hope that works for her because i know it's worked for several other vtubers we talked a bit about nyanas um a few weeks back who is absolutely found some success in that regard not just from her public streams but also from smaller scale more private stuff that she does and the way that she works with her friends in Bishojo and the way that she collaborates with people from outside Bishojo as well So yeah, I, I hope that works out for Crony because she's a likeable person with a good sense of humour. But it seems she, she is also someone who has struggled at various points in the past and, and or present. And so she very much deserves the opportunity to have a bit of happiness and while having a, a high profile VTuber role is of course in some ways quite a risky and probably a terrifying thing to do I know Kiara has talked about this quite a bit but 
at the same time it presents you with some really great opportunities to understand yourself a bit better to get to know other people to work with other people that you respect and admire Come on, you got to be nearly done now. That's a filthy slide. But yeah, so, so Crony is cool. Um, Sana seems quite entertaining. She is the, the space girl, as it were. She actually highlighted something quite interesting because she was the first to debut. And the fact that she's um, not American or doesn't have a strong American accent is something I found quite noteworthy. I believe she's she's Australian, I think. Which I thought was cool. Um, there was someone else who had a, a bit of an accent too. I forget e exactly who it was. Might have been Bells. Or was it Fauna? I've not really watched much of Fauna yet. The Fauna's got straight into ASMR, which is uh, something I'd like to check out. Because I know quite a few VTubers do ASMR, and I haven't really explored any of it yet, but I do, I do enjoy good ASMR. You just need the right um, kind of situation to enjoy it in. being able to just just sit and enjoy it without any interruptions preferably with a nice pair of headphones on what I might invest in at some point is um, some of those headphones that you can sleep in because I've got some nice headphones, but because I, I don't generally get on with earbuds, uh, most of the headphones I've got are big bulky pairs that are not really practical to sleep in. They're either not very comfortable, or like these ones I'm wearing right now, um, I find you get quite hot in them after a while as well. But I, I like to sleep on my side, so obviously sleeping on your side with a pair of headphones like this is not something that can uh, that can really work. So but I have seen that there are sort of I don't know if they're specifically ASMR headphones, but they're they're certainly certainly designed for sleeping in. Um, so I will have to investigate those at some point. All right, making pretty good progress here. Let's do this bin next. Get that ball out of the way. Okay, lovely stuff. Another bench. That's an easy one.
This game is really satisfying. I mean, I, I know that's, that's probably very obvious from just watching it, but it really is. There's just something about the sort of gentle, gradual process of working your way through what's going on. And it doesn't have a lot of the frustrations of real life cleaning. Like sort of missing bits or your tools not really working in the way you want them to or stuff like that. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right. I think it's probably just this crack in the middle now, isn't it? Oh, another bench. Let's deal with these little bits and pieces first, and then we'll tackle the big bit in the middle. So yeah, who, who else was there from the uh, the new Hollow Lives? Um, like I can say Mume. Uh, I haven't watched her full debut as yet. I sort of skimmed through it for Rice Digital. Uh, but I did watch her journey stream, which was thoroughly enjoyable. Because her sort of gentle, inquisitive nature and her caring attitude just worked really nicely with the overall vibe of Journey. And Journey's not actually a game I really liked that much when I played it. I was a big fan of um, Flower from the same developer but I found it when I played Journey it kind of left me a bit cold but watching Mume play it um, it's kind of given me a new appreciation for it I don't know if when I when I played Journey for myself I was just like not in the right mindset for it but and likewise I'm not entirely sure that watching Mume play it has made me want to play it but I, I've certainly enjoyed watching her play it and her reactions to it. Which I guess is the, the main value of streams for stuff like that, is, is seeing, seeing how people react to the different situations. Not necessarily even sort of surprising situations, but just... Seeing the way that she was interacting with the other players in Journey, for example. As Journey, if, you, if you've not come across it before, Journey it is... Oh, there's a term for it. What is it? It's like subversive co-op or something like that, they call it. I can't remember the exact term they use for it, but... It's basically, while you're playing... You can randomly show up in someone else's game and someone else can randomly show up in your game. And you can't communicate directly, so there's no voice chat, there's no, no means of identifying the other player. Um, all you can do is you can, you, can make, you can press a button and make noises. And you can walk around and you can do stuff. And so your communication with the other people is mostly non-verbal. And, and seeing Mumo figuring this out while she was playing was, was really endearing. Because she, she was initially concerned that she was like holding this guy back and that they were going to get frustrated with her or so on. Until she, she sort of gradually came to realise that no, this person was here, they wanted to help her out. That's the whole point of Journey. The whole point of this subversive co-op, or whatever they call it, is um, the fact that you help each other out. And you get more value from the experience if you do work together like that. Of course, there's no obligation to do that. If you do want to go charging off on your own and ignore the other person, you can do that too. But 
I have never seen someone encounter another player in Journey and not work together with them. And that's kind of interesting because it's not even really working together as such. So, like, there's nothing you need another person to help out with. But often the dynamic is, like, the, the more experienced player will kind of lead the less experienced player around to interesting things in the environment or show them where to go next or that sort of thing. But by virtue of the fact that there's no direct communication... There's no way that they can be pushy or impatient. Oh, well, I mean, there probably is, but there's no point in being pushy and impatient because, that, again, that's missing the point of why that mechanic is in there in the first place. And as I say, the, the, the big appeal of Mume's stream on, on Journey is it was watching her gradually figure this out. Understand what this game was showing her. and recognise what this other player was doing. So she's a lot of fun. And like I say, if you... if you prefer the idea of a more sort of gentle VTuber who doesn't spout obscenities or yell or scream... She's definitely a good one to watch. Um, so who else is there? I say this. There's Bells. I again have skimmed through her debut. I really, really liked what I saw of her in her debut, but I haven't watched one of her full streams yet. But I think she's going to be a good one. I think out, out of all of them, she is the one who is probably most likely to be a runaway success. And that's partly because of her character design, partly because of her personality. Partly because she seems comfortable in the sort of quote-unquote leadership role. In terms of the lore of these new characters, if she is sort of the chairman of the council, as it were, and, and she seems to be a good pick for that because of her natural charisma and ability to bring people together. People, people like people like being around her. People like doing stuff with her. And she also seemed to be one of the ones who was... She was one of the ones who people were showing the most interest in before they debuted as well. In terms of things like fan art and that sort of thing. And so, in general, with the debuts, what I thought was really cool was... Oops, excuse me, my computer is apparently low on disk space. <laughs> um, one of the things I thought that was really cool about the debuts of the Council is that there was so much outpouring of support from VTubers from other agencies, so, like, all of the Visojo gals were very interested and excited in it. 
Um, I saw the Niji Sanji EM girls were all interested in and watching what was going on. Um, and smaller companies like Phase Connect and Cyber Live. They were all showing an interest as well. In fact, the only thing approaching negativity that I saw, it wasn't even really negativity. It was some of the sort of independent VTubers were kind of subtweeting other independent VTubers and sort of saying, well, don't be mad about these because they're corporate VTubers. Without them, without them, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be a thing. So I, I didn't see the original context of what that was responding to. So I'm sure somewhere, someone somewhere out there was moaning. About Hololive's dominance in the VTuber sphere. And I appreciate that can probably be frustrating for a, a small independent performer. Trying to get out there, trying to get known... And then a bunch of new girls turn up and they get several hundred thousand subscribers in the space of a day before they've even done anything. <laughs> I can see how that would be frustrating. But I mean the same is true for any kind of any kind of creative work online. Like I, I could easily have got frustrated at the the slow rate at which I've picked up subscribers for my channel here on YouTube but you know what it doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me too much because I'm not doing it to pick up subscribers I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it and over time there's been a slow but sure influx of people who come along and watch my stuff because they're interested in it or because they like me or because they they like the way I do stuff and that, I think, is a, a good and sustainable way to do things. But at the same time, I appreciate that without the large-scale people covering things like retro games and simulators and that sort of thing, smaller YouTubers wouldn't be able to achieve what they do and so yeah that, that is sort of the closest I've seen to negativity regarding the new Hololive girls because I mean there really is no point being negative about it because there is the one criticism you can lay at their feet is not their fault it's a curious part of online culture and what I'm talking about there is the the culture of the culture of hurling money at streamers and yes you could probably make the argument that VTubers are sort of cynically using character designs and things to extract money from people but you know what I don't think that is the case I know plenty plenty of people who enjoy VTubers who have never I don't even know what Super Chat is don't know how to use Super Chat I have no intention of using it have no intention of subscribing to anyone on Twitch. Have no intention of doing whatever other bullshit Twitch has got with its channel points and all the things it keeps adding in there to make things unnecessarily complicated. But I hate Twitch. I really hate Twitch. <laughs> I think the value with YouTube is, is escapism. 
because they offer a nice blend of fantasy and reality. Because most people who are watching them are aware that there is a real person behind that avatar. Who is talking to them. But at the same time, it's, it, it's hard not to see them as the character they portray. So, like, I've, I've seen... I've seen the person who is Amelia Watson, for example. I, I've seen the person who is Kirio Coco. And a couple of others. When I watch those people do their streams as, as Amelia Watson, as whoever, as far as I'm concerned, she's Amelia Watson. And there's a definite escapist element to that, because... Because they are animated characters, they are people that you wouldn't be able to interact with in reality because, much as we would all love it to be true, anime girls are not real. Except in the case of VTubers, where they are. <laughs> But at the same time, I think that's good for the performers because it allows them to keep a certain distance between themselves and their audience. Which I think is probably very important for them. So that when they do need to switch off, they can. Uh, I'm making gradual progress. This is a big old job though, isn't it? How long will we be going? 53 minutes. Don't know if we'll finish this today, because I know um, my wife is presently cooking a, a roast dinner for us, so I may have to depart at some point. But we'll keep going for as long as we can. As always, I'm having a nice chat, just having a nice time just chatting on about nothing in particular, the things that are crossing my mind. And it just so happens that those are the things that have been on my mind this week. And injuring myself and VTubers. What a week. What a week, eh? Sloshing water sound is really nice. There we go, lovely stuff. Yeah, there's some there's something really pleasant about that sloshing water sound. Alright, what else is there to clean in here? The whole inside. Right, give me that. Uh, oops. Unlocking stuff left, right, and center. Nope. 
No, I said move it out of the way, not... How do I actually get in there? Can I get in there? Surely I can get in there. Let's go up the slide. Oh, I'm too short. Too tall, even. To be a child. There's some more filth. So yeah, a, a relatively, oh, I don't know if I want to call it an eventful week because like the one event right at the start of it basically put pay to anything else going on, but you know, as I say, it is what it is and shit happens. On the VTuber front, one thing I have found of late is that I've had a curious prevalence of dreams about VTubers. So last night, for example, I dreamed that I was taking a coach trip. And for some reason, um, I was late showing up to the coach before it departed. And uh, when I got there, I found that Amelia Watson had been kind enough to save me a seat so that I could sit next to her, which I thought was jolly nice of her. On another occasion, uh, I had a dream about hanging out with Iris. The V singer from Hololive EN. It's kind of interesting because I actually haven't watched that many of Iris's streams. I watched her debut, which was uh, which is cool. And I like her design. I find it a very striking design that sort of always leaves quite an impact on me whenever I see it. And so I think that's where that's where I think this stemmed from. But. Yeah, on, on another occasion, I, I absolutely had a dream um, where I was hanging out with Iris. Uh, she was in her bedroom getting changed, and I was there for some reason. Nothing filthy was going on. She just happened to be getting changed, but while she was getting changed, she was just dealing out some life advice to me, which I thought was nice. she didn't have to do that but she did because she's nice because she's a nephilim or whatever she is and the embodiment of hope which i think most people would agree is something we all need right now particularly if you've had a week with a sprained ankle What else is dirty on there? That side. That side is dirty. And that side. It's 
So yeah, I'm just wondering who the, who the subject of the next VTuber dream is going to be. I love dreams. I find them fascinating. Like especially especially the sort of weird recurring dreams. I I I've have a number of very strange recurring dreams, and I've I've talked a little bit about these with um, some of my patrons before on my um, my daily Patreon blog. But since we've still got some cleaning today, I might as well talk a bit about them here as well. So I think my favourite recurring dream. It's actually not really one recurring dream. It's more of a recurring setting. Um, and after playing Project Zero Three, I've come to refer to it as my mansion of sleep. But what it is is, I've had a lot of dreams, like more than one or two, like a significant number of dreams that have all been set in this same house. And I've had those dreams so often that I, I genuinely can't remember if it's an actual house that I've been to. Because at this point it really does feel like a place that I genuinely know. <laughs> The main reason I doubt that is because um, there are certain sort of fantastical elements in this house. Um, but I also find myself wondering if it is sort of based on a house that I've been to before and then my mind is just doing strange things to distort it. So this house is quite it's quite a large house. And it's on I think it's on three floors. The sort of interesting thing about it is the interesting thing about the the design of it is that the middle floor is kind of um, a long corridor. The middle floor is kind of a long corridor and there are staircases at either end of that corridor so from downstairs you can climb up to the second floor in two different places or you can go at one set of stairs go along this long corridor and then come down the other set of stairs in a different part of the house down the house's ground floor and along this long corridor there are at least two bathrooms. Um, one of these bathrooms... <laughs> this is going to sound really stupid now. One of these bathrooms is um, precariously situated above a portal to another dimension. Which means that when you go in there, um, the floor is unstable. Occasionally tiles fall off the floor and reveal a gaping void underneath that you can quite easily fall into if you're not careful. I've never actually fallen into it, but I felt genuine fear at going into that bathroom because of the risk of falling into this gaping void. So there's that. And then there is um, sort of a, a much more normal bathroom which is where you go if you actually want to go to the toilet <laughs> because the other one is just far too dangerous and I think I think there's a bedroom on that floor as well so that, that floor there with the two bathrooms is, is sort of one of the most commonly recurring things that I see in my dreams um, downstairs downstairs there's this sort of strange area where um, 
you you climb down like a, a couple of stairs to take you down to kind of a a bottom bottom level as it were and um there's a room there that has a, a glass door and sort of glass windows it's almost like a conservatory but it's so, it's sort of like in the middle of the house rather than on the edge of it and i often see there's often sort of party food being served in there when i see it in my dreams um and i don't really know why <laughs> Uh, so what else is there? Oh yeah, the, the, the top floor of this house is like an, like an attic bedroom. And one of the most common things that I dream about with this house is that I live in that attic bedroom, but it's time to move out. And inevitably, when I'm having this dream, I know it's time to move out, but I'm not at all ready to move out. So all my stuff is still in there. I've still got a bunch of stuff in the cupboards. For some reason, the whole room is lined with velvet curtains, like a fortune teller's parlour. And I've always, always got more books than I know what to deal with. Which is certainly something that used to be true, but I, over the years we've actually sort of discarded a lot of our books. Mostly taking them to charity shops and stuff rather than, rather than just chucking them away, I hasten to add, so... But yeah, there's this recurring feeling that I'm supposed to be moving out of this house. But I'm not ready to do so, and I'm not sure I really want to do so either, because it's a, it's a comfy room that I like. I like the velvet curtains, I like the fortune teller vibe. But again, that's just something that my brain keeps coming back to for one reason or another. And there is almost certainly some sort of deeper meaning to the... I know the moving house dream is, is something that I, I, I've spoken to other people and they've had similar dreams before. I just find it interesting that it's... Every time I have it, it's always from the same kind of environment. But that it's, it's not a real environment that I know. At least I don't think it is. Because like I say, I've had these dreams so many times now that I'm genuinely unsure if this house, obviously leaving aside the toilet that is also a portal to another dimension, I'm genuinely unsure as to whether or not this, this house is a place that I've been before. I've just got this mental image of one day going somewhere and it being this house and I'm being like, oh, right, it was that all along. But I don't know. I have other recurring dreams like that that I know are not true. Like, I have... A recurring dream about um, skiving off from school orchestra and knowing that I'm doing that and knowing that I shouldn't do that because well because I like school orchestra and because I was an important part of it back when I was at secondary school but sort of I, I see the guy who was my old music teacher And I find myself sort of avoiding his gaze and ignoring him and that sort of thing. 
And it makes me feel bad because I used to really like him. I used to really like going to school orchestra and all that sort of thing. But again, that's a, that's a dream that recurs surprisingly frequently. It's probably something like fear of responsibilities or something like that, which would be in keeping with my mental state. I do fear responsibilities. Because responsibilities are scary. But yeah, that the, the the school orchestra dream is what is one of those ones that is so vivid. I'll wake up in the morning and question whether not whether it really happened then, but whether it's a real memory. Because it always feels incredibly real. It always feels like I'm remembering something that I did in the past that I regret. But I know that's not the case because... I remember certain aspects of my life at secondary school rather fondly and... My involvement with the music department was very much one of those things. But what you gonna do? This new power washer I got is really good. It's got a nice, nice bit of power to it. I haven't had to change the nozzle once because this sort of this setting I've got it on here is sort of good for both detail and wider areas very pleasing indeed made a good investment here there these towers are just a bit of a bugger to clean there's so much to them Oh, this is all one thing, like <laughs> Just adjusting my seat. My bum is going a bit numb. <laughs> they get for sitting here power washing for so long.
Oh, I can almost feel that spray on my face. That would be really nice right about now. Quite warm here. The other side of the shop. Get inside there, I think. I'm looking forward to a roast dinner. Lovely looking joint of beef to enjoy. It's going to be really tasty. And the suitable reward for a productive day's power washing and video making. This isn't the only video I've made today. I should add. Although it is the longest. <laughs> nope. If you're going to do a job, do it properly. Done with the tower. Just a few more bits of drop to get off there. And then the roof. And then finish off the floor, and I think we're done. widen the nozzle to do this roof bit. Yeah, that's handling that quite nicely. Who'd have thought a game like this would be fun, eh? Imagine telling someone back in like the, the mid-90s playing sort of top-notch shoot-em-ups and beat-em-ups and adventure games and stuff on... Uh, consoles and home computers that the big hit of the year 2021 would be a game about power washing things need my ladder where's my ladder
So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what we've talked about today. As I say, these these videos are not about anything in particular. They're not intended to offer insightful critique or anything like that, or reflections on the deeper meaning of Power Wash Simulator. They just are what they are. Which is an opportunity to chat. An opportunity for me to complain about things that have been bothering me. And that's about it, really. Is there space for a ladder on the other side? Yes, there is. Wonderful. filth on this roof that I haven't found yet. Where is it? It's around that side. That's why I haven't found it yet. I haven't looked there. And all underneath here. Wash this stank off your roof. A bit more up there. What else? Still a lot of stank on there. So close, so close, so close to being done. There we go, right. Now this thing. Stanky ass children have been here to make it this much of a state.
the bonus, it'll be extra slippery now. Making everyone using it more likely to break their neck. Come on now. Come on now, this is clearly clean. Maybe not. <laughs> no one's going to see that bit. There we go. Right, cargo net, dice, and floor left to do. So dice are over here. They're done. Um, there's the net over there. I just need to get around the back of this. I can't stand up. It's too short. just the floor. Let's get away with a wider novel for this last bit. And we are done. Super job on the playground, Dirt Finder. Looking at it now, I'll admit there may have been the odd fleck of dirt here and there. And aren't there just so many colours in this world? Too many, perhaps. Anyway, you've got those bleating worry warts off my back and my message has disappeared. So, there's our time lapse. Gradually working our way around. Scrubs up nicely. And for that, I cannot thank you enough. Continue! Right. So, two more to do. Golf cart and a detached house. But we will leave those for the moment. Now I've got $560 to spend on stuff. So probably some attachments for our, our new uh, squirty thing. Uh, but for now, we'll leave that there. So, thanks for listening to me ramble. As always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you again next time.